let's just briefly review what we went over in class. And remember, we found that, according to Aristotle, Thales' views can be summarized as uh, in four claims. And if you're wondering, by the way, where this is, let me just remind you that we read some excerpts. So if you go over to Blackboard, here's our Blackboard page. And if you go down to Course Documents, there you will find, well, you'll find a copy of the first part of the first chapter of our book under the Milesian Naturalists, but you'll also find Milesian Fragments, and down on the bottom, I gave you a little background in terms of the geography and in terms of the timeline of the various um, the various ancient philosophers, the various ancient Greek philosophers that we're going to be talking about. But if you want to take a look under Milesian frag fragments, my suggestion is to download the, bo uh, the document, save link as, and save it somewhere on your desktop. Let me just stick it there and in, if you're using Google Chrome, you can just open it up. Now the problem is rotating it. We'll actually have to open it up in Adobe, but you, you see that we have some excerpts here. So that's where you find the excerpts if you want to take another look at it. But let's now go back to our set of slides now that you know where to find this stuff. Okay, and there were four views that were attributed to Thales. One was a claim, and you see that it's from Aristotle's Metaphysics, that's my shorthand for the book Metaphysics, water is the arche of all things. That is, water, arche, like in archaeology, the origin, what everything came from. So it's kind of answering the question of cosmology. Where did everything came from? come from? Ooh. Where did everything come from? Today, we t scientists would tell you, the Big Bang. Now remember, 3,000 years ago, before there was any science, or when science was getting started at the same time as philosophy, said everything started from water, at least according to Thales, the first guy to pro propose a natural... That's why we call these guys the naturalists, by the way. The Milesians, we call the naturalists, because they're looking for a natural explanation, an explanation of where the cosmos, the universe, came from by nature. Second one, the Earth rests on water strange claim. We talked a little bit about though. The magnet has a soul. All things are full of gods. Now we're trying to make a distinction between what we heard from you know, the ancient myths about the gods, about Greek polytheism, the Greek mythology that you heard from Homer and Hesiod, and what the philosophers were doing. That is, Homer and Hesiod were poets just recording the traditional beliefs about the Greek gods. By contrast, Thales is trying to give you some kind of objective, some kind, I shouldn't say objective, some kind of natural explanation. And certainly the first two sound like natural explanations of things, right? No gods are involved. Water is the or origin. It's where everything came from. The RK, the Greek word, where everything came from. He also tells you it's also the thing that everything is made up of. So it kind of has two, uh, two connotations there. And the earth rests on water. It's a claim about you know, the land. That is the land that we live on, the continents, as we would say, where they, if you were living in ancient Greece or ancient Turkey, where he, he was, you know, the land next to the water, it was all resting on water. And remember, guys, they didn't have maps in those days. They didn't look at the globe, you know, pictures of the of globe, like you, uh, of of the Earth, like you have now. They didn't know anything about that stuff. Then we get to the stuff that sounds a lot like Homer, and Hesiod, like the gods. The magnet has a soul. You know, the soul thing you talk about. The soul is something you talk about in religion, and all things are full of gods. That really sounds like some kind of myth, but you know. As we said, it seems like this is a strange collection of views, bizarre collection of views. But then we had to figure out why is the what makes these views philosophically or scientifically interesting. You know, is it about ethics? Is it about metaphysics? Is it making claims about knowledge, epistemology? Is it making a claim about science? I mean, what exactly is the nature of this that 
and at least I'm claiming, and I think Shields is agree. Shields claims that Thales is departing from the ancient mythological explanations.